Let's explore the operation of a single phase AC motor. Here we've shown the stator with the main windings. In another video I hope to show that this is enough to run the motor, but it's not enough to start the motor. What we need to do is we need to somehow make a rotating magnetic field. Before we get too far, let's take a quick review of our magnetics. You'll recall that the flux density is proportional to current. With a few equations we can show that this is true. Recall that the flux density is equal to the flux divided by area, and the flux is defined as the magnetomotive force divided by the reluctance. And finally, the magnetomotive force is an amp turn, so it's how much current is flowing through the coil and how many windings are in that coil. Anyway, if you follow it all through, you can see that the magnetic flux density is indeed proportional to current. So, let's apply a sinusoidal current and see what happens. This is a representation of that current in the time domain. Let's look at what happens inside the machine at a few angles of interest. For example, at zero degrees there's no current, so there will be no magnetic field in the machine. At 90 degrees we see the current has reached some maximum. The magnetic field will be at a maximum, and let's assume that it points straight up. At 180 degrees there's no current, there's no magnetic field in the machine. At 270 degrees, we've reached the maximum negative current, and the vector will be pointing straight down. And finally, at 360 degrees, we're back where we started. There is no current, so there's no magnetic field in the machine. This vector is certainly not rotating. All it's doing is growing up and then growing down. It's growing to the north, shrinking, and then growing to the south, and then shrinking back. What we need is a second set of windings that will allow us to point east and west. And so we add the start winding. Assuming we can find a way to generate a current that has a phase shift of 90 degrees relative to our main winding, we'll have a rotating magnetic vector. If you haven't done so already, you might want to look at my other video on rotating magnetic fields in a two-phase machine. There I show how a machine with two sets of coils that are offset from each other by 90 mechanical degrees and are driven by two electrical signals that are offset from each other by 90 degrees, you can make a rotating magnetic field inside the machine. Now is a good time to look at the electrical model of the main winding. It consists of two parts. There is a resistance and there's an inductance, and we'll pick some arbitrary values of 5 ohms and J10 ohms. We'll also drive it with 120 volts. If you put the two together, let's call it Z1, you'll see that it's 5 plus J10, or if you want to put it in polar form, we could say it's 11 ohms at an angle of 63 degrees. At this point, we could do a calculation to figure out what the current is, but that's not necessary right now. Instead, we just want to know the direction of that current. And being as it's inductive, we know that the current angle is going to be negative, in this case negative 63 degrees. Now when we added the start winding, we know that we need to generate another current that is at a right angle to our main winding. We'll sketch that here as a current that has an angle of 27 degrees. For this discussion, let's assume the start winding is identical to the main winding and both have a resistive component of 5 and an inductive component of J10. To change the phase angle of the current then, we're going to need to add a capacitor. Again, we want our impedance 2 to be equal to 5 plus something, such that that something is going to give us an angle of negative 27 degrees. We can use a bit of trigonometry to solve for that. Here in the real part, we have 5 ohms, and we're looking for the imaginary part. Using trigonometry, we know that the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, and we solve for the opposite side by multiplying the adjacent by tan theta, which in this case is 5 times tangent of negative 27 degrees, which gives us a reactive component of negative 2.5, and we write that up here. So Z2 is equal to 5 minus J2.5. Or, if you prefer, we can put that into polar form as 5.6 at an angle of negative 27. We can now compute the current in each branch of the machine. 
In the main winding, we have 11 amps at a phase angle of negative 63 degrees. In the start winding, we have 21 amps at an angle of 27 degrees. To our original time domain plot, we can add the current for the start winding and for the main winding. My apologies, folks, I got the colors backwards here. But you can see they are offset from each other by 90 electrical degrees, with the start winding having a greater amplitude. Earlier I mentioned that you don't need both windings to run the machine. In fact, all you need is the main winding. You'll find many manufacturers add a switch that once the motor is up to a certain speed, it will disconnect the start winding. I should mention that the value of the capacitor is chosen so that it is equal to negative J 12.5. Since this is a series circuit, the impedances all add up. So we have 5 ohms is the real part, and then you have the sum of the capacitor and the inductor, which in this case is negative J 2.5 ohms. I want to end this video on a fun fact, and that is, what is the voltage on the capacitor? Well, the voltage on the capacitor is equal to the current times the impedance. We calculated the current as 21 amps at angle 27 degrees, and the impedance of the capacitor is negative J 12.5. And when you multiply those two together, you'll find that the voltage on the capacitor is 263 volts, which is really interesting because that voltage is over twice what the source voltage is. And I'll leave it as an exercise to you to determine why it's so high.